Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'll be showing you what I believe is the best way to farm and harvest the Amethyst Geodes in Minecraft. And this video applies to Bedrock Edition and to Java Edition as well, since the Geodes are basically the exact same on both platforms. I'm going to be really upfront with you, this video is not about redstone. Geodes are designed in a way to be absolutely terrible for automation, and redstone, simply put, is the worst option when it comes to farming the amethyst geodes in minecraft what i'm going to show you in today's video is a bunch of different methods and tactics and little tips and tricks to make the farming and harvesting of amethyst geodes a lot easier a lot quicker and overall just a very painless process just to demonstrate why automatically harvesting an amethyst geode is a bad idea and it's just not made for automation we have a little bit of a setup right here on the right you can see six amethyst clusters and on the left you can see another six amethyst clusters ready to be harvested with pistons. The thing about pistons is whenever they break an amethyst cluster, they are only ever going to drop two amethyst shards, every single time, guaranteed. So if we break another five of these things, we're going to end up with 12 of these shards total, which isn't like inherently bad or anything. However, it absolutely pales in comparison when harvesting these things with fortune three. Breaking a single cluster with fortune three can result in 16 amethyst shards. So if we harvest a total of six of these amethyst clusters with fortune three, you can see that we can get ourselves an insane amount of shards. We got ourselves 60 just from six of these. That is about six times as much as we got using pistons and all it took was a simple fortune three pickaxe. So yeah, just harvesting a single one of these with fortune three can give you anywhere from four to 16 amethyst shards, which is a really, really good amount. As you can see, the minimum that you get is four, so it's still twice as good as harvesting with a piston. And that's not even mentioning the sheer amount of nasty, gnarly spaghetti redstone that you need to actually automate a single amethyst geode. As you can see, this is the redstone and piston layout required to harvest a single one of these clusters, and a normal geode can have anywhere from like 10 to about 40 or so of these clusters. So imagine this chaos, but like times 40, and then you're you're getting into the real state of what an automated amethyst geode farm would look like. And this system right here isn't even ideal because you still need to wait for all the crystals to grow, manually check them, and then press a button. That way you don't break any of the crystals before they are fully grown. So if that isn't convincing enough for you, let's talk actual rates per harvest. This right here is a large geode that has a total of 38 amethyst buds. And when this thing is fully grown, it'll have 195 full fully grown amethyst clusters. If we were to harvest this thing entirely with fortune three, we would get around 1664 shards per harvest, which is about 26 stacks. Of course, this number can vary slightly due to fortune three, but about 26 stacks per harvest of a single geode. If we were to automate this using redstone, we would have 195 pistons in this room. If we were lucky, we would have redstone spaghetti absolutely everywhere countless hoppers and water streams and this entire room would be an absolute mess and a nightmare to deal with not even counting for the resource cost that would be put into the materials to build it and the maximum shards that you get per harvest is 390 as you can see, that is a pretty stark comparison. Fortune 3 is the pretty clear winner. And unfortunately, the Amethyst Geodes are literally designed by the devs to just be a very, very bad thing to automate. So I think I've made my point. Automating an Amethyst Geode is pretty much just a terrible idea all around. However, that doesn't mean that we can't do this pretty easily and quickly. So basically, the best method that I think there is is filling up the entire room room with water and getting yourself an aqua fanny helmet and some depth strider boots you'll also want yourself a fortune 3 pickaxe that does not have efficiency that way you're pretty unlikely to break your budding blocks because if you break those there's no way to get them back so as long as the room is filled with water you can swim around here very easily if you have a night vision or a conduit then you can see everything really really clearly as you can tell the water is basically invisible 
and all of the items will either float to the top of the room or just go directly into your inventory and you can harvest an entire geode within just a couple of minutes giving you an insane amount of shards. The way I would recommend doing this is by standing on top of the actual buds themselves and then you can aim downwards and there's very little chance of you breaking these buds. There's no need for like scaffolding systems or pillars of blocks or ladders or anything complicated because you can just swim absolutely everywhere. And as you can tell, just from about 30 or so seconds of swimming around the room and collecting these shards, we already have several stacks and even more floating up at the top of the ceiling ready to be collected. I'm inclined to believe that this is the intended way of farming them as well due to the fact that the buds can grow crystals into water and flowing water. The geodes themselves will never generate full of water and the buds are very unlikely to be touching water when generated so there's no reason for that feature to exist. However, if the developers tested this out during, you know, the development of 1.17, they likely would have found that filling the room with water is like the easiest way of farming them and thus added that feature to the game, allowing this method to be possible. So the first thing that we need to do when trying to build ourselves a geode farm is not just find one geode, we want an entire cluster of geodes. These things take an incredibly long time to grow, so most likely you're going to be AFKing at these things. You don't want to just be growing one geode at a time, you ideally want to be growing three or more. That being said, if you happen to have like a geode underneath your base or something, then totally go ahead and farm that one since you're already going to be loading that area and the geode is just going to be growing all the time anyway. But if you don't have a geode near somewhere where you play often, then definitely get yourself a cluster of three or more. Oftentimes, geodes are inaccessible or very well hidden underground. So if you want to find a really good cluster really easily, you can visit chunkbase.com and they have a geode finder. As you can see, these things are absolutely everywhere in your Minecraft world, and if you just look around a little bit, you can easily find a cluster. Here you can see we have six of these things in one area. You can AFK directly in the center. All six of these things can grow, and then you can go ahead and harvest them. As you can see, if we click on the icon, it gives you the exact coordinates of where the geode is, which is incredibly convenient. As a side note, the chunk base can also show you where buried treasure is, and this is going to be relevant a little bit later on. So this right here is a standard geode that you would find in the ocean floor and you'll notice that it's actually full of air even though it generated underwater. Anyway, if we go ahead and remove all the excess blocks you can see that it's actually a fairly large structure but what we need to do is clear out the entirety of the inside. You want to remove all of the calcite blocks and the standard amethyst crystal blocks as well. When doing this be very very careful as to not break the actual budding amethyst there is no way to acquire or move or grow or replace these so if you break it it is gone forever and you can't get a new one so be very careful so yeah go ahead and remove all of the standard amethyst blocks and remove all of the calcite as well and then just leave the smooth basalt edges around your farm so now that you've cleaned out all of the excess blocks we want to actually go ahead and fill this thing up with water and that might take you a little while to figure out a good rhythm to get into but the basic way of doing this that's really easy is just grabbing yourself a couple of buckets placing those down and then you can spread infinite water sources across all of the layers going up from the bottom to the top. Now if you're underneath an ocean you can just pop a hole in the ceiling and then all the water will flow down and you can grow up some kelp and that'll turn all the flowing water into water sources. Alternatively you can also use ice blocks to create water sources. If you don't break them with silk touch then they will basically just turn into water sources and that's a pretty decent way of flooding one layer at a time and as you can see it can flow across pretty easily once you get enough ice going in here. So now that your room is full of water that's really all there is to it your farm is now complete as long as you have a fortune 3 pickaxe aqua affinity depth strider and possibly a conduit you are good to go so basically i would start from like the bottom going upwards being very careful not to aim at the actual bottom block itself another thing i want to note here is when mining them you basically just want to like one tap if you got just a standard generic diamond pickaxe and a conduit you'll be able to one tap them and just basically instantly break the crystal meanwhile you won't be able to one tap the 
spotting block as quickly. As you can see, I can one tap this and it's not actually going to break. That is why you do not want efficiency on your pickaxe. If we pull out a higher efficiency tool, you can tell that I can one tap this and then it's just basically gone instantly. There's not even a chance for you to think about it and stop mining. So actually a slower tool will be better for you in the long run. If you're using a maxed out netherite pickaxe or even a diamond pickaxe, over time of harvesting this thing, you're going to be losing a lot of buds. So it's in your best interest to have a specific tool without efficiency on it that you use for harvesting these geodes. And that's really all there is to it. After a couple of minutes, you'll have an entire inventory full of these amethyst shards, just stacks upon stacks upon stacks of them. And if you have an entire cluster of geodes, like three or four or five or six or 12, then you are going to be absolutely stacked on the crystals. You will have more than enough for all of the projects that you ever need. And you won't even be worried about automation, really. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then of course, let us know in the comment section down below. I'm always trying to help you guys out as best as I possibly can but if you enjoyed today's video then of course make sure to leave a like or possibly subscribe those are the two best ways to support the channel and thank you so very much for doing those otherwise I will see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one thank you so much for watching and then there was silence